Welcome to this edition of EPAC All Access live from Spring Mills football practice here as we approach week one in the West Virginia high school football season. Spencer Boyd joined alongside Colin McLaughlin and Nick Verzellini. Happy to have you with us here as uh, we talk Spring Mills football. The last words we heard from Coach Sims at the end of last year was being young isn't an excuse anymore. Talking to some guys today, watching them out on the field, I, th I think we realize that this team's taking a big step. They're definitely bigger than last year. Bigger, stronger, probably faster as well. Uh, you know, and, and a big thing that the coaches have emphasized is the weight room and that they've been putting in the work and been committed to that part of the game, which is, you know, really important piece if you're going to get better. I mean, there's other things you can do to get better, obviously, as a football player, but if you're building your strength and quickness and uh, agility and stuff like that in the weight room with that kind of training, you know, your explosiveness as well, that's really going to be a difference maker. And in the past, one of the things that I think has held Spring Mills back is not being as big as some of these other EPAC schools when it comes to the offense and defensive line. Uh, but they've put in some work, and, and they look measurable, or they look to be measuring up to those other teams that we've seen so far in the EPAC in terms of their size. So I think that will no longer be an issue this year. And, and like Coach Sims says, he you know, there's really no excuse with this team being young anymore, so it's time for them to take that next step. Colin? Yeah, the, this team's energized. They're tired of being counted out. They're tired of being doubted. They really have a lot to prove this year, and they know it, and they're looking forward to trying to prove that on the field, starting with Jefferson and then going and trying to finish the season against Hedgesville and make the playoffs. This team has a lot coming back. That's a big upside, I think, to this squad, and with that is guys with experience because, as we've said, this was a young team, teams or guys, excuse me, two years ago that were freshmen that are now juniors that were starting varsity. They've had a lot of growth, a lot of experience now. They know what they need to do to get to that next step, and I'm looking forward to seeing if they can accomplish it. Yeah, uh, so later on on the show we'll be joined by uh, an interesting situation here as Coach Sims unfortunately has to deal with a family matter. He's away from the team right now, uh, you know, sending our thoughts and prayers out to his family right now. Uh, but it's a cool thing we're going to get to do today. We're going to get to talk with the offense and defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator Marcus Law and defensive coordinator Buddy Hess and kind of get a, a, a different look of things as we usually get kind of the top down look. Now we're going to get kind of the two sides look as one we're going to get the offensive you know the coaching side look on the offense and the defense also going to be joined by uh, junior quarterback Max Anderson and uh, senior tight end defensive end Nate Graham I think we are going to learn a lot today during this edition of EVAC All Access guys for sure and I think uh, you know we talked to Max last year obviously he has matured a lot I mean he's always been a leader I feel like like you could tell he had that intangible uh, but he's obviously, you know, grown with the team, become more of a vocal leader now that he's a junior. And you know, I'm excited to see what he does this year. Just a really good athlete and has always seemed like a, a nice kid and, and just, a, you know, a guy that can lead this football team. And, and we'll see, you know, Spring Mills, week one, that Jefferson game, Spencer, that you mentioned, you know, it's a huge matchup, I think, across the state and across the EPAC. It's going to tell us a lot about both of those teams. If it's a close game, which we would anticipate it being because, you know, Spring Mills brings back a lot. Jefferson obviously has had the playoff success the last couple of years. Um, then it proves that what we think about this Cardinals team is true, which they could be potentially a playoff team this year. And then if it's not a close game, then maybe they still are a year away from having that success. I mean, obviously it's just one game. It's just week one. So a lot can change throughout the course of a season, but – if you want to set the tone and be a playoff team, a win against Jefferson week one would certainly do that. Yeah, it's going to be a huge task to do it because even though they have a lot of guys coming back, they're still going up against one of the best receivers in the state for Jefferson and Keyshawn Robinson. But I'm looking forward to seeing how Max Anderson does along with his brother and Xavier Anderson and then Nate and a couple other guys really trying to step up on both sides of the ball to make sure this team is one of those top 16 teams in the playoffs and a team we're talking about that maybe in that first round can even win a game. Yeah, and so you mentioned the schedule. We'll get into you know, what Jefferson, what that Jefferson game me means for this team a little bit more uh, after we go through the schedule here. So it's week one against Jefferson. I believe that's a game 
believe that's at Jefferson. I believe so, yeah. Uh, and then they're going to be at home here September 1st, take on Albert Gallatin out of Pennsylvania. Then South Hagerstown the 8th. The 15th of September, they'll take on Musselman at Musselman. The 22nd of September, they'll be at North Hagerstown. And then they'll get into hosting Washington on the 29th of September. Uh, October 8th, 6th, excuse me, they'll host Frankfurt. Then the 13th of October, they'll make that return trip from the home-and-home home last year that they started with University. That's going to be a big game on the schedule. And then on the 20th of, of October, it'll be uh, Martinsburg. Uh, and then to round out the season, I believe they'll have their bye week at the, the end of October. And then the final game of the season, week 11, will be Friday, November 3rd. They'll take on Hedgesville, and that game – the Hedgesville game we mentioned will be a huge game as well, but you go back to that Jefferson game, I, I think, and we talked with the coaches about it, that uh, that Jefferson game is going to be a measuring stick game to see how far the offseason program has taken them from where they ended last season with a team that's been in the playoffs the last couple of years and you know has their quarterback back from last year, has you know arguably the best receiver in the whole state back uh, with them as well. That's just going to be a big overall game for them to start the season, guys. Yeah, I mean, it's a great challenge to begin the year. I think you're looking at this Spring Mills team schedule. There's a good chance that they could win at least three out of those four non-conference games. Um, you know, and university is kind of a coin toss, I think. It could go either way. So you have a chance to win all of your non-conference, which I think sets you up pretty well to be a playoff team. If you can, you know, flip a game and, and then potentially beat Washington, which you would be expected to do, at least based off of last season. But we know Washington's obviously going to try to get better and be a tough team this year. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's definitely a team that's in that four to six win mark where you would probably expect them to be at this point if they can get to seven or eight. You know, I think that would be a little bit higher expectations than what we necessarily have for them and be a little bit of them overachieving maybe based on what we think right now. Uh, but it's certainly possible, right? They could flip a game against Musselman or Jefferson, you would think. And then, of course, Martinsburg's kind of, you know the top dog around here so it's it's kind of tough until somebody does it i'm i'm not going to predict anybody to do it um in terms of martinsburg falling which i don't know the last time they lost to an epac team and colin you know we were talking about this it's hard to predict the end of the season but kind of how things have shaped out the last couple of years it, it seems like this final game of the year which we'll have for you on tv 10 on wr and rtv on youtube talk radio wr and r as well um Spring Mills hedges so that could be for the final EPAC playoff spot if you will usually you see three to four teams make the playoffs you know they would be on that three four five range team based upon last year um, you know I think that's going to be a huge game to end the season yeah even if you weren't going to tee it up for me this is the point that I was going to hammer home we've been saying it on the air off the air it doesn't matter in our minds it seems like that final game between Spring Mills Hedgesville is going to be for a playoff spot because at least on the Spring Mills side, not really for the Hedgesville side, the past few seasons it's been that Week 10 game for Spring Mills that has decided a win and you're in, a loss and you're out. So they want to obviously not have that as the situation. They want to be a team that's in that 6-7 to seven win range already and be comfortable in the playoffs. But if it comes down to that last week... Who's going to step up? Is it the team that right now has some experience behind us? Or is it going to be Hedgesville, who has a lot of guys coming back too, but not that experienced yet at the quarterback level? Yeah, I think that'll be a big key. Uh, anything you guys want to hit on before we hit the break and talk with the uh, offensive coordinator, Marcus Law? I think I'm good. Yeah. All right. Well, that will do it for this first segment of EPAC All Access. When we come back on the other side of this break, we'll be joined by offensive coordinator Marcus Law. You're tuned in to EPAC All Access on, ta on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The WB Hospitals East Foundation is excited to announce the inaugural Dr. Frank Sabato Jr. Pickleball Classic to be held on Saturday, September 23rd at the W. Randy Smith Recreation Center in Inwood. Join us for a fun round-robin style pickleball tournament with start times at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. Awards ceremony and lunch will follow. To register as a player or sponsor, call 304-264-1223 or go to wbmedicine.org backslash berkeley backslash giving to download the registration form. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? 
I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Hello? We're here again three times in the past two days. You're where? Bechtel Jewelers. Look. Can Mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechtel Jewelers. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why Owners Just Do More no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. Welcome back to this edition of EPAC All Access Live from Spring Mills Football Practice. We're now joined by offensive coordinator Marcus Law. And Coach Law, for you, uh, how many years is this now here? This is uh, my third year here now. Third year here. Kind of like a lot of these kids on this team in this program, a lot of juniors on this team that are going to excel, but you got some seniors as well. Mm -hmm. What's kind of – what's the most – the biggest difference you've seen from this year's team so far on on the practice field and in the weight room to last year's team? I mean, honestly, the biggest difference I think is the weight room. I mean, that's one thing we've when we first got here. Um, obviously, the weight room was a factor, but this this group of kids have bought into the weight room, and that's something that you know Coach Sims has had to try to install culture wise into this program, and it, it's there, and that's it's a beautiful thing to see that part of the program grow. So this being your third year, it's the third year for your quarterback as well, Max Anderson, yep. leading the offense. Just I guess I want to stay with the relationship first before we get into seeing the growth maybe on the field for him. Just talk about how much the relationship between you and him have grown. Uh, I think, for, first of all, the relationship piece is huge. Um, and once you have you know, officer coordinator and a quarterback on the same page, it just makes things go. And for, like, for me and Max, it's, it's not necessarily just on the football field, but he's a kid that through the hallways in the school, he's going to be a leader. And that, and that just part just makes it awesome to see you know, your quarterback being a leader in different spots. Him and I being on the same page is another part that hopefully we'll continue to grow that part on as well. And when you look at this team this year, the last thing when we talked to Coach Sims at the end of last year, we were here broadcasting the university game. Unfortunately, it was a loss and ended the season. But he said going forward, being young, the youth isn't going to be an excuse. How much of a mentality has that kind of been knowing year, I believe it's year four for him this year, yeah. year three you know, at the OC, and then year two for Coach Hessen on the defensive side. How much is it knowing that uh, – how much of a difference is it knowing, hey, this is when everything should kind of fall, fall together, fall into pieces uh, – or fall into place, excuse me, when it comes to, you know, just the way that the players know each other and, you know, the playbook and everything. How big is this year going to be for you guys? Well, I mean, honestly, if everything works the way it's supposed to, we're going to see the results that we uh, – Coach Sims have talked about at the end of last year. Um, and also with these guys not being as young anymore, there are certain things that you see now as far as the communication piece. It's like some of our receivers and quarterback with Max, they're on the same page, and it's something we haven't had before. So we already <coughs> went through our mic'd up segment and fortunately had you <laughs> since uh, unfortunately Coach Sims isn't here. But you're a pretty energetic coach out on that field. Just talk about how much the players feed off that. Oh, it's huge. Uh, you, we can come out and have a flat practice, but if you got that one coach who's a little bit energized, they feed off of it. And, like, for me, like, I've, I've never been a guy to kind of sit back in practice and just be metal. Like, I love energy. I love getting things started. So it's huge. It's contagious. And I just feel like uh, sometimes you, sometimes the coach has to get that spark going, and the kids feed off of it too. And when you look at the schedule this year, 
Uh, you know, you play North Hagerstown, South South Hagerstown, now we're Gallatin out of Pennsylvania. Uh, but the week one for you guys, you know, coaches always say the next game is the most important game. Yes. It's Jefferson. It's it an EPAC game to start the season comparatively to every other school in the EPAC. Mm-hmm. not starting the season with a conference game. What do you think that that game is going to mean for you guys as a program? Because Jefferson coming off two straight playoff appearances, winning, you know, getting to the next round last year, um, you know, offensively for your team, mm-hmm. what kind of measuring stick is that going to be? I mean, Jefferson's a great team. Um, they've got plenty of athletes, lots of speed. Um, it'll it'll actually tell us where we are right now as a program. Um, it'll tell us where the, the weight room has taken us right now. Um, but it's ultimately it's, it is a test. It absolutely is a test, and we look forward to it. What are some of the goals that you've put up for your offense this year? Um, continuing drives. I think one thing for us early on was we, we needed to finish drives, and that's one thing we've been hyping on uh, moving forward through this point. And, you know, we know, obviously, Max Anderson, um, you know, you got Nate Grant. We talked yes, to him. He's yes. going to play a little offense as well. Yes. Uh, but who are some other guys? We know Keon Mills from last yep. year, but who are some other guys that are kind of going to going to take some spotlight this year? Well, as far as skill guys, though, we have Hope, um, and then we also have Xavier Anderson, which is Max's brother. Those two guys throughout the summers have done some wonderful things on the outside, but then we have kids like Jason Strider, who's been to the program for us. This is his fourth year, and he's also looking for the opportunity to grow. But, I mean, I can't forget about our offensive linemen. No, you got Anthony Williams, Prophet, um, our center, uh, Braylon Kirk, also guys who are looking to take that growth step and move in the right direction. What are you most excited for out of your team this year? Just kind of see wh- where we are. Again, I know I keep talking about this growth part. I want to see us uh, finishing what we started. All right, offensive coordinator Marcus Law, our guest. Thanks for the time. We'll be back for more on the other side of this edition of VPAC All Access. Mommy? Where does flavor come from? Well, um, when people love food, they cook it on a Traeger grill. Meat, corn, even pie. (laughs) And then the Traeger does the rest, which brings everyone to celebrate this beautiful thing that they've created. Because when you share delicious food with your friends, that's the flavor of life. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a newer used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. Welcome back to this edition of EPAC All Access Live from Spring Mills Football Practice. We're now joined by defensive coordinator Buddy Hessen and year two for you here, right? Year two. What's uh, kind of these this summer been like for you as you know you came in last summer obviously a new coach on the staff but now you're kind of here year two for you. What's uh, what's this summer been like coaching the, the defensive players? It's a, it's a continual work. I mean, we are a work in progress. Uh, I think the kids know me a little better. You know, of course, I've gotten to know the kids. Uh, they know my expectations. They know what I want. And uh, they know that if I don't get what I want, I'm not going to be very happy. In turn, they're not going to be very happy. Last year, very young team. This year, it's gotten older. you got a great junior class. Uh, 
pretty big senior class as well too this year unlike last year just talk about I guess the growth that you've seen from your players during the offseason the biggest thing has been right up there in the weight room uh coming in uh I was like whoa this is definitely not what I'm used to uh but coach Balini does a great job up there we're still not where we want to be in that uh respect but we're, we're trending in the right direction and when you look at some things last year, obviously, talked about that the youth on the team, and then you moved to this year. Uh, what kind of things have you seen in practice on the field that uh, you know get you a better sense of where the team is compared to last year? We get number one. It's just that year of growth, uh, it's new system formed, or second year in it. So, you know, we're we're not quite where I want us to be, but you know, they under their understanding is a lot better of, of what they're supposed to do in, in each and everything we do defensively. Who are some of the guys on the defensive side of the ball that have really stepped up and become leaders for your guys? Uh, Anthony Williams, number one. Uh, Zay, you know, and it's crazy. He's the younger brother of Max. So you, you would think uh, it's the other way around, but Zay's really, things of him, is just, he's really matured you know, from his freshman to sophomore year. Uh, Keon has done a great job. He, I'm moving him all over the place. You'll see him at safety. You'll see him at corner. You may see him at outside linebacker. Max is another kid. He's playing outside linebacker. He's playing safety. I could line him up at corner if I wanted to. But but those guys have really kind of stepped up and taken that leadership role. Nate Graham's another one. Uh, we call Nate the universal soldier. I mean, he's, he's locked in all the time. And you talked about seeing kind of the difference that you saw in the weight room and now on the field. How do you think that guys playing multiple sports has a positive impact on how they are in the weight room and how they are in the field when it comes to being able to do multiple things in multiple sports? Well, I mean, I, I'm all for them doing multiple things. My whole thing is, okay, if it's football season, it's football season. And, you know, I, another coach would be asking them, hey, come to this, come to this, come to this. Just like I'm sure they wouldn't want me, you know, if it's March in the middle of track season. Hey, we're having a flex day today. I, I hope you're going to be there, even though you got, you know, track practice or a track meet. Um, but like I said, I'm all for, you know, multiple sport guys. But when it's, you know, it's football season, it's football season. Let, let's let those kids focus on that, and they can focus on those other sports every other, you know, every other month of the year. What are the goals on the defensive side for your team this year? We just want, you know keep getting better uh, you know for a long time you know at, at my other place you know we had to say get better every day but, but that's true wherever we want to be better you know today than we were yesterday be better tomorrow than we were today just continue to get better in everything we do defensively and first game for you guys is going to be an EPAC game against Jefferson. Obviously, Jefferson's made it to the playoffs the last couple of years. Went, you know, went deeper last year than they did the year before. What do you think is going to be a test for you guys when it comes to their offense? Obviously, they've got a second-year quarterback coming in. They got, you know, debatably, you know, the best wide receiver in the state in Keyshawn Robinson, who's committed to West Virginia. What kind of challenges are they going to make your team have to step up for? I mean, again, you we're gonna to have to account for for you know Rob's kid each and every snap. I mean, they're gonna hand it to him, they're gonna throw it to him. Hell, I hear they they may even want to snap it to him, him be the wild. Card. I don't know, but we need to make sure we account for him each and every play. But with that being said, Jefferson year and year they got as many athletes as anyone you know in the state of West Virginia. So you just can't say, okay, we're gonna shut this kid out because they have so many other kids that can beat you. What should Spring Mills fans be most excited for about this team? Just the, they're going to see a year or two, a little bit different Spring Mills team, uh, a year older, a year wiser, a year hungrier. Um, and they've placed some huge expectations upon themselves, which I love. Right? I expect a lot of them, but now these kids are expecting a lot out of it, and, and that's what I love. Thanks for the time, Coach Hessen. We'll be back for more of EPAC All Access on the other side of this break. 
I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. Car accident? Get more with Mansion for Ready. After a car accident, what does it mean when we say get more with Mansion for Ready? It means making the insurance company do what's right. It means getting a powerful local law firm on your side, one with decades of experience. And it means the peace of mind of never paying us a fee unless we get money for you. So if you've been injured, get more with Mansion for Ready. 304-264-8505. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome back to this edition of EPAC All Access, live from Spring Mills football practice. We're now joined by starting quarterback Max Anderson. And, and Max, last year you guys had a young team, but this year you're kind of maturing and you got a lot of guys back, and it's now you know another year in Coach Sims' system. What's this offseason been like for you? No, nah, it's been good. It's actually been a lot better. We've uh, went to a lot of 7-on-7s seven -seven this summer. Uh, I actually went to WU, then we went to uh, Hampshire one, and we won that championship down there. And in, West, in the WU one, we went to the semi or quarterfinals, one of the two. But honestly, there's a lot of improvement from the guys. Um, we've honestly put a lot of work in during the summer, lifting-wise and uh, just on the field. Uh, wide receivers, they've been putting a lot of work, and they've been grinding all summer. Keon Mills, Cam, uh, Hope Oque, Xavier Anderson, my little brother, uh, they've honestly all put in work. And I think it's just going to be a really strong year for them and all the guys in general. Like, we've just been working hard, and it's just – I just can't wait till Friday so we can showcase what we can do. Max, two years under your belt now as the starting quarterback. Just talk us through what the learning process has been and uh, what you've really seen yourself grow on. Uh, honestly, I went to a lot of camps this summer and uh, just learned a lot. Uh, the game has definitely slowed down for me. Uh, I've definitely learned a lot from older guys like Tyson Bajan. Went to his camp not too long ago. Learned a lot from there. Uh, went to Shepherd camps, uh, Yale camps. I went to uh, Kentucky. I went to a whole bunch of camps over the summer, and I just learned a lot from different different guys, different teams, and just my mechanics have really just gotten better over, overall. You talk about going to all these camps, but you've also been to a lot of basketball things as well. Yes, sir. What's the balance been like for you this summer? Because I'm seeing all over Twitter all the time you're going to these showcase events, yeah. but then, then four days later I'm seeing you throw a football. So what's the balance been like for you between football and basketball this uh, summer? It's definitely hard. Uh, you just got to be disciplined and just, I mean, I want to be good at both, so if if I want to be good at both, I got to put the work in for both, and it's just been time consuming, and, and I like it. It's just like, I mean, it's just a normal day for me. I mean, I'm gonna go probably play basketball and go train later, so, I mean, and I just got done earlier training before practice, but yeah, uh, I just if you want to be great at things, you just got to put in the work for both. We were here for your guys' final game of the season last year against University, and unfortunately it was a loss. But after that game, interviewing Coach Sims, he said. It's no longer an excuse about being a young team. This team's now experienced, and we're going to take big strides next season. So talk us through the offseason and some of those strides that have been taking place. Uh, I mean, the strides have just been working hard, honestly. Uh, yeah, we're no longer young. we got a lot of seniors now. Uh, a lot of guys have been in games and experienced the Friday Night Lights, and it's time to, it's time to really play, and we, got, we have no excuse now. It's time to go. 
and looking at uh, your non-conference schedule this year. Obviously, you're going to start off the season with a conference game. How kind of exciting is that for you to start off the season with a team that you, that uh, was in the playoffs last year and kind of a measuring stick game for how far you guys have come? Uh, honestly, it's just we're we're hungry. We want to go out and play. We're just we're honestly if we if you if you scheduled this game tomorrow, we'd be ready to go. I mean, we just want to play. We're ready. We're ready to show what we can do. Spring Mills is always, uh, I guess, not as good as these other EPAC teams around here. So I mean, just we just want to we just want to stop being named that in, in that category. We want to show that we're a good team around this EPAC. What's the goal for this season? Just the growth. Every game get better. Make the playoffs. Just get better every game every week and let's. Let's do, you know, the big goal is what well, you want to win is one of the state championships. So we'll keep growing to get that level. What's your goals this year personally? Uh, personal goals, I mean, personal goals for me, I'm not a selfish guy. So I just, I mean, I, honestly, I just want to win. Uh, do do what's best for the team. And whatever happens, happens, you know. I mean, as long as we get the win, hey, I'll, I'll take it. Sorry, you're one of the captains for this team this year. What yes, are sir. some of the things, I guess, leading by example that you feel like you've done successfully this year so far? Uh, I mean, pushing guys. And when, you know, it's been hot out this summer. So, you know, people, teams get tired and stuff. So it's like, you know, you got to keep pushing them when they get tired. And it's just like, honestly, me and the, all the other captains, we've just been really, really on our guys, making sure we're good. And we and we, we want to be better and want to be one of those great teams. And we got to keep working and working hard every single day. Don't leave nothing on that field. God, God gave us a, God woke us up every morning just to put this work in. So, it's just, it's just awesome that we just get to come out here and play and have fun. Spring Mills quarterback Max Anderson, our guest, will be back for more next on the other side of this break. You're tuned in to EPAC All Access on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Hi, it's Talk Radio WRNR and TV10 Spencer Dupuis. When I got into a car accident and needed to get another vehicle, I wanted to go somewhere I could trust. So I went to the Heffley Motor Company at 993 Hedgesville Road. As a first time car buyer, I really didn't know what to expect. But at Heffley, they treated me like family. Every step in the process was seamless. Not only did they give me a great deal, but they also helped me secure an amazing interest rate. Now I know firsthand why Heffley has such a great reputation in this community. I ride with Heffley Motor Company, so you should too. Nothing goes better with football than chicken. From Pee Wee to the big boys to the wing tee formation, a hearty meal of 12 pieces for $12 is just what the boys need to be at their best. Oh my, fumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Omaha! Rock's 12 pieces of chicken, just $12. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer deaths in the United States each year. But do you know the radon levels in your home? Home is a place to live, love, and laugh, not a place to breathe air containing radon. The Berkeley and Morgan County Health Departments are distributing free confidential radon test kits, and you can get yours at the Berkeley County Health Department office in Martinsburg and the Morgan County Health Department office in Berkeley Springs. Protect your home and family. Get your free radon test kit today. Welcome back into this edition of EPAC All Access Live from Spring Mills Football Practice. We're now joined by uh, linebacker tight end Nate Graham, and uh, you're a senior this year. Awesome. Obviously, you've, you've had a few years under Coach Sims. What the, What's this offseason been like for your team? We've really been working harder. We've definitely been working harder than last year. You know, I would think that this is one of our hardest working years we've so been far. Nate, we've been seeing on social media, it seems like you've really bulked up for this season. Uh, just yeah. talk about going into your senior year, what you're most excited for. What I'm most excited for is just to see improvement in myself and for my team. You know? And 
next week you'll take on Jefferson to start the season. One of the only, well, the only team your fa- the only team in the EPAC facing another team in the EPAC week one. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Jefferson, a team that made the playoffs last year. You guys were a game out of the playoffs. What is uh, kind of that game going to be like for you guys, knowing it's a team that uh, the last couple of years have made the playoffs, and it, it would be a big win for your team. Um. I mean, we've been working hard. We've been doing, you know, we've seen it at the 707s, and we've been doing pretty good in the 707s. We beat them in the 707s, so we'll see. Just got to go hard. Uh, practice today really looks like focused on the defensive end of things. Just talk a little bit about the defensive side of the ball for you guys and the steps that uh, you guys have really improved on. Um, we've definitely improved on hustling. We're emphasizing the hustle to the ball. Um, yeah, besides we have everybody back from last year, mostly everybody. Yeah. You talk about everybody a lot, you know, almost everybody back from last year. How does that cohesion help going into another season? Definitely with um, chemistry, chemistry of your team. You know, you can get a lot more people in there that know what they're doing, that can communicate to each other, feel comfortable communicating with each other. That really goes a long way, the communication. You're one of the captains. Uh, just talk a little bit about just some of the goals that y- you and the captains have uh, put together for your team. Um, definitely in previous years, we've bickered a lot. The team has bickered a lot. So I guess we're just trying to, you know, build a better bond with our team, you know, lead more, you know, yeah. And last year, we were we broadcast your guys' final game against University. Obviously, didn't come up on the, the bright side of that to get into the playoffs. Yeah. When we talked with Coach Sims after the game, he said that being young was no longer an excuse after that last season. How do you think that kind of here, it's, you know, a few years into his system, you're obviously a senior this year. Um, you know, you took those growing pains last year. How are you guys going to take that into this year to, you know, turn, you know, flip that four and six to a six and four at least? I mean, he's definitely right. Being young is not an excuse no more. But what I'm seeing is that everybody wants to work a lot harder, you know, especially that it's their senior year. They want to go out with a bang. Who are some of the guys that we should watch out for in Spring Mills this year? Mm. Oh, we have we could have a, um, some pretty good young guys. You no, know, you have Xavier, six six, sophomore, pretty good. Got to get him up in the weight room, of course. But yeah. <laughs> Anybody stronger than you yet? No, I didn't uh, think we so. Ha- we have two, but they're not not stronger than me yet. <laughs> all right, Nate Graham, our guest. Thanks for the time. We'll be back for more on their side of this break on EPAC All Access. The 37th Community Wellness Screening Event, sponsored by Rotary of Martinsburg with services provided by WVU Medicine, will be held Saturday, August 26, 6 to 10 a.m. at WVU Medicine Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation on Tavern Road in Martinsburg. Know your numbers. It's easy and convenient. No waiting in line. No doctor's appointment. Discounted screenings offered. Pre-registration required. Deadline to register is August 18th. Sign up today. Call 304-264-1223. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. It's the excitement of NCAA Division II football on TV10 featuring the Shepherd University Rams. He'll throw it. It's intercepted by Harrison. Dante Harrison is Mr. Touchdown on defense. 
Join us on Saturday, September 2nd, as the Rams kick off the 2023 season against Southern Connecticut State at Rams Stadium. Kickoff is set for noon with pregame coverage beginning at 11.30 a.m. right here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. But you, you got enough for the hook, though, to help. That was important. Now he's going to call some brace self. Hey, good job getting it out early. If you want to take that shot, you got to set your feet early. I know, I know, that's what I'm saying. Hey, Zane. I'm sorry, I meant Zane, sorry. Zane, hey, if you're going to do that, man, don't stop near the sideline and turn back inside. You're going to get smashed, man. You know, see what I'm saying? Go ahead and turn that thing up. Good, Rowan. Ball in the middle. Hey, hey, put the ball away, Rowan. That ball's out to lose on the backside. Ah. Hey, Cam, good play, boy. Good play. Good play. Come on, fellas. Need a score. Need a score. Hey, coach, I'm going right now. TD. Huh? <laughs> you getting it now? All right, bet. Hey, hey, that move got to be one, two, and go, man. You can't wait for Calvary. Balls up. Balls up. Balls up. Yeah, but it's got to be. They, they had a blitz. Why did they do a backside? No, they had a blitz. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So I just get the hitch instead of the gun. Yeah, you don't have time to set your feet unless you want to be up in the hospital. Hey, come on, come on. Good pick up! <sighs> hey, Rollin. Hey, I need the up, man. Let's got to hit that outside shoulder. Hey, hey, way to get yourself back into the play. Good job. I got you, I got you, but you fought in back in the position to try to make a play. That's good stuff. Ah, smooth. Smooth. Your hands, right? Huh? Watch out my shoulders. Well, you get uh, hands are outside, it's a hole. Hey, 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 let's go. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Get up, get up. Ah. Hey, hey, hey. You don't want to meet Nate in there. You don't want to meet Nate in there. Uh, listen, 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 listen. As soon as you get the ball here, right? Here, you've got to wait outside the front. Listen, I'll back out here. Hey, it's a big old banana, man. You just got to continue turning. Come on, get in there. There we go. Good, good, good. Good read. Good read. Yes, sir. Say we throw a fade ball over top Hope's head. <laughs> I'm all about it. I know you are. That's why I said it. Hey, ball, 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 ball. Twin, go, go, go. Come on, come on, finish it, fellas. Finish it, fellas. Finish it, fellas. Let's go. Ah, uh, Max, we talked about it. Good, Alex. Good. Let's go. Two plays left. Let's go. I need a slot. Slot. Need a slot. Hey, here we go, coach. Oh, you got one? Who's out? Who's out? Josiah, Josiah, come get this back. Next play, get in the running back. Reset. He didn't know you got in late. Hey, line, line. Hey, you guys were smidge late. You guys were smidge late, man. What'd you get? I had an orange. I was manned up. So Man up. Him. And the okay. came, hefe came right underneath him. So it'd be a backer. Yeah, but that's why he's saying check red. So I can get out there. Hey, you want it again? Yeah. Hey, for the top. <laughs> Let's go. Ball. Run it. Run it. Hey, hey, you have to go somewhere with that read, though. Because they don't see that. Better angle just to get down. Let's go. Yeah, wide, wide now, step. Good, good. Let's go. Hey, hey, how do I? I know you saw a sidearm. I saw it. This ain't no, this ain't Aaron Rodgers, bro. Come on, boy. Oh, I'm sorry, Brett Favre. 
hit the balls way out here at 100 miles an hour. You can't pick up the pace of the ball. It's got to be nice and easy to him. If you can't do it, you better learn a dead ball snap. Okay? That was wide and fast. He can't do anything with that, man.